William Lawrence is a professor of political science and international affairs at American University. He joins us now from Washington. Uh, William, uh, when it comes to this uh, loss of this Russian ship, we're getting um, different stories, of course, from Ukraine and Russia. Uh, who, who to believe? What are your thoughts? Um, I have a lot of information on this that hasn't been reported in the press, and I know some of the Americans who were involved. So if you give me a minute, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Um, when the when the Defense Department said today that they had medium confidence in the U.S. Uh, sorry in the Ukrainian version of events and no confidence in the Russian um, view of events, uh, that was true because the Ukrainian uh, uh, um, uh, version wasn't entirely true, because the Ukrainians said they hit it with one Neptune missile, and what Kirby said was they hit it with possibly a Neptune missile and maybe more. My sources, Americans who were directly involved in this, said the Russian ship was hit with more than just Neptunes. Other missiles and other drones were involved. U.S. private citizens and shipping interests were directly involved in planning this attack. After the sinking of foreign flagged vessel, vessels in the Maripol port and the Odessa uh, port that you've been reporting on uh, over the last few weeks, and this was retribution for the attacks on foreign flagged ships, uh, U.S. government was involved in providing intelligence, which also helped with the targeting, uh, and it was shot by the Ukrainian military with U.S. assistance, not green lighting the attack, but intelligence assistance, targeting assistance, but the decision was made by the Ukrainian military with multiple um, uh, military assets, not just the Neptune missile. And I got this directly from Americans directly involved in this attack. Uh, it's interesting indeed. Uh, how significant of a loss is this for Russia? It's a big deal. As one commentator said, only the loss of an aircraft carrier or a nuclear uh, submarine would have a greater impact on Russian Navy and Russian morale. Uh, in the short term, everyone's expecting an escalation. Uh, the problem is, is that the Russian forces have been so decimated and their financial picture is darker than has been reported, according to my uh, sources in the financial world and the intelligence world, that the Russians are scaling back, not scaling up. Their current strategy is to try to expand the area, of course, in the Donbass, Luhansk, Mariupol agency. They might make one last attempt for Odessa. They probably won't succeed, and then they would settle back in the type of frozen conflict that they had after the 2014 invasion of Ukraine without venturing further until some time in the future where they would make an attempt again. If they succeed in taking Odessa, they might try to attack back towards the center again. Um, but uh, my sources are telling me that probably won't be successful because of all the successes the Ukrainian military are having with a lot of international assistance, including U.S. intelligence assistance against the Russian armed forces. If I could add one more point, there's a ramping up going on at See, which I was talking about in TRT for eight weeks now that this would be coming. There's a ramping up in cyber. There's a ramping up in the air. Uh, this is all things that I expected to happen uh, as uh, foreign assistance coalesced around the Ukrainian defense of Ukraine, including a lot of foreign fighters. All right. Some really great information in there. Professor William Lawrence, thank you so much.